Hey guys, welcome back to part number 6 of my F16 build. So today we're going to get the sensei mount the canopy, we're going to master the canopy, and we're going to get a primer. Originally this episode was going to be paint as well, but there's so many steps, I mean, looking at editing would be like an hour and a half long, so I have to kind of split into half, so make it a little bit more usable and bite-sized. So we'll go ahead and get started with the, um, the canopy and the priming, and then next week we're going to look at the, um, the painting side of things. Okay, welcome back. So, we've gone through a lot of work on this, but many, many hours in. Now we're getting to get into my kind of favorite part. Where we're about to start painting and weathering it. Before we do that, we're going to take care of the canopy. Um, this is one of those things where you just need to look online because you do get the tinted canopy front and back, and you get a clear glass canopy front and back. So, you re again, just look online. Um, there's a great website, it's f16.net and literally put in the number of your aircraft um, so I'm using, again I'm using these afterburner decals, it's really good information on here, I'm going with this 91346 so I just went to f16.net typed in 91-346 and if you look at the picture here it looks like they're both tinted so what happens is it brings up all the history of the aircraft, the airframe brings up all photographs and you can actually pinpoint the photograph to this actual tour of um, Insulic Turkey and I saw a photograph quite clearly um, with crew chief standing in front of it and it has a clear back and a tinted front. So that's really, there's a real no method of madness I don't think to this, you just got to literally look online for pictures, whatever airframe you're doing, if you're doing say 91382 or if you're doing, what else are we going to do? Uh, 93554, so whatever your airframe is, just look it up and it'll, it'll type, then just look at pictures if it's tinted or like both tinted or one's clear and that kind of stuff. Right, so if you look at this, you can see there's a sensor seam running through it, which there shouldn't be. So there's a few ways of doing this. Um, I actually prefer the UMP sanders for this. This one looks really good for the end polishing. The one that might go to one for getting seam, I just can't find it. It's not a skinny kind of one shaped like this, but um, you can always use flooring models too. They've got you know this one cut up. This is like a good one. Um, but like I say, I just find that some reason the UMP ones work a little bit better for the seams. Um, also, you're going, to, you're going to need a little bit of compound to get the scratches out. I like Novus. This is really just polishing. Number two is what you need for the fine scratch remover. Alternatively, uh, Tamiya bring out, they have a fine and a finished compound. You could use that too. It's basically like tooth we could just use toothpaste. I mean, it's the same kind of thing. These are still sealed. I've never used them, so I'm not sure how good they are. But um, let's say I use, I've got Novus, which is open, and that's kind of my go to. So, first thing you're going to do is this is one of those things is do what I say, not what I do. Um, you should really put some blue tack or something behind it, so when you sand it, you're gonna crack it. You have to be very careful. The good thing with this kit is, like I say, you do get a tinted one and a clear one, so worst case scenario, if you do crack it, you can at least just switch the canopy over with the other one, right? So, what you're gonna do is, you see this line going down the middle, the camera can catch it. I said, I've never used this one before, so hopefully this works okay. Not, it's pretty fine. Um, I'm just gonna scratch out that seam line very carefully and you want to be kind of very kind of minimalistic with your, with your action so you don't you know scratch too much otherwise it's just more of it to polish out the end right so just going to come in make sure I get rid of that line okay, almost got it don't worry, we're gonna polish that out. So that's that bit done. This works too good too. If, I mean, if you put like say a car builder and you get some super glue on the windscreen, or windshield, depending where you're on it all, this works the same way. You just sand it off like this, um, and then come back and polish it off. That's worked for me in the past too. One's a little trickier because it's kind of smaller, so I'm just kind of get right get in there and get rid of the um, the seam. Okay, and 
and just take a look at this again. A little bit more. want to make sure I do, I, often when I do this, to be honest with you, I, I don't do enough and I have to go back to it a second time. So this time I'm just making sure I really kind of get that seam line out and have to kind of double handle my work. Okay, so there you can see where I kind of sanded it out. So next step, come back with the Novus, the fine scratch remover, or again, you can, like I said, you can use toothpaste or you could use um, the, ca the compound from Tamiya. Just need a tiny little bit. This one's actually a little bit old, so it's kind of stuck a little bit in the nozzle. Sometimes you use a toothpick just to get some out. Just put a little bit on, you don't need a ton. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this side first, and then that's like the polishing side. So I'm going to start with a little, slight, very, very fine, but slight grit to it. This gets rid of the bigger scratches and then we'll come and polish it in a minute. And then just come on the other side. And you can see it's coming out. Right, so back to the other side. Just take your time. Again, not putting any pressure on this because you're on the cracked windscreen, the, the canopy, sorry. Okay, switch sides again. I think all my build videos I've done, I think I've talked about it, but this might be the first time I've actually shown on camera, maybe. So I like to try switch it up a little bit, not make it so repetitive, so. And there you go, took the seam. You see, it's, it needs a lot more polishing. Um, and then towards the end, I'll come in with a number one and just kind of clean it off. But it gives you an idea. I'm not going to have the video running for like 20 minutes while I finish this, but um, that's pretty much how I do it. So I'm just going to keep working both sides. This kind of slightly rougher side and then the very shiny one until it basically starts squeaking. And then you know you got it right. Um, so I'm just going to keep working this to make it perfect and shiny. And then we'll come back on camera and we'll get ready to mask it. So masking wise, they do come with a masking set. It's not die cut. Um, a lot of people use knives and cut these out. To be honest with you, I'm easier with scissors. So I just cut out some scissors and, and go that way. Um, but we'll do that a little bit. So let me finish off um, both these parts, getting the seam line out, and then we'll go from there. Right, so I worked about 30 minutes on this to get the seam out. I'm really happy how it is. Um, I figured, hey, I spent so many hours on the bombs and everything else on this thing. I might as well just do a good job. So you see I started masking it up already. Um, mask the back, back one super easy. Um, this is one kit we don't need a mask set. The F16 canopy is so easy. I mean, you just run some tape around it. It's not difficult at all. Um, but the fact you got it in the box, I'm using it anyway. So how it works basically is you put the outside edges on and then you basically just build it up in the middle. You don't really need the middle pieces. You just use normal tape and just fill it in. But for sake of this, I'm, I'm using the pieces. So the main thing is just the outside edge to make sure you cut it real nicely with the um, the line. The inside doesn't matter because it get overlapped. And then these pieces that go in the middle, again, I won't sweat about getting right on line. So I'm just going to, again, because you just overlap the other pieces, it's not going to be no edge on it. So I'm just going to quickly whip around again, not much care, just kind of loosely follow it because again, these are the inside of the, you know, again, you, both these both um, edges are going to be covered by other tape. So as long as you're in the right ballpark, it's all you need for this. Just zip around, boom, boom, boom. G, and look at my instructions. It looks like it goes on the side. So again, we're just overlapping it. As easy as that. And then it's just like I, F sorry is on the other side. So again, these just inner pieces of tape, you don't need to worry about being right on the edge or taking much care. Just 
you know, cut them out and stick it on basically as long as it's overlapping the other pieces piece in the middle like, like I mentioned earlier some people cut these out with knives I'm not a great knife user to be honest with you I find it easier with scissors I can cut a lot better with scissors than I can with a knife so I mean whichever way you prefer I guess last piece in the middle done just make sure there's no gaps and it's fully masked as easy as that didn't take much time at all so there is a frame that goes in here we'll paint that and add it later so what we'll do is we'll attach, go ahead and attach this back piece. Why well, use clear parts? I always use um, a clear glue, PVA glue. I don't want to take any chances of it fogging. You'll probably get away with extra thin, but I'm just going to use this um, Gator Grip, Gator's Grip um, white glue, or you could use um, Crystal Clear too. So I'm just going to get this guy and. Wipe the glue on. And stick it in. Just going to clean up the edges. You want to leave that a few hours to dry, ideally overnight. Okay, and then on this guy, I'm gonna glue it in place too, just so it doesn't fall off. So I'm actually gonna switch glues here and go to crystal clear because it doesn't quite hold as bad. And um, this is just peels right, it's PVA glue, so it dries clear and it peels right off. Um, it's not gonna damage any of the paintwork or anything. So I'm, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna couple spots. If I get some on my brush, on my um, Q-tip, just add a couple of little bits just to kind of bind it. Make sure it's cl close up so I'm getting paint in. And there you go. So leave that um, for a few hours. Once it dries, that will just tack it in place nicely so we can move this thing around. It's not going to all fall off and stuff. Um, so I'm going to let this dry and then come back. I'm just going to plug up. Um, actually, don't worry about that bit, but the back, we need mask up the back part where it's. Um, we painted the internals so we don't get paint on there from the um, the primer and stuff. So okay, let me let this let this dry for a few hours, and once this canopy is kind of tacked down, we can we can move on the rest of it. Right, so the canopy stuck on. I also added the back bit. Um, I forgot about that part, but I just masked up the silver edge, um, bunged in some foam in the back so I can get all paint in there. Took off the horizontal stabilizer in the tail, we'll paint all separately. But before we do anything and start priming this guy. Um, we need to paint the inside of the canopy first because that's obviously the paint that's going to be visible on the inside and that's going to be the, the cockpit dark gold grey colour so I'm going to use XF53 I want to go with the old I want to go with the old Tamiya paint um, just because it's a little thicker I don't want to use lacquer paint because it might kind of leach and get underneath the mask set it's very thin so I'm going with the acrylic paint for this um, so I'm just going to put a coat down the whole canopy let it dry and then we'll come back with a primer so I'm just going to turn the, um, the extractor on. Nice light coat first.
Okay, so it's blew out the rest of the paint on there, so, um, off the jet. So that's done. Um, that's the inside of the canopy colors, and then we'll come on a primer on top of that. Obviously, you're going to see this color underneath first. So that's any jet you paint is always best to go with. Well, you should always go with the um, inside of canopy color first, unless you start painting on the inside, which I, I don't bother with. Um, all right, so we'll let that dry, and we'll come back and we'll start priming. Right, so the gray is dry, and now we'll come back with my primer, which, as always, I use Mr. Surfer 1500 Black. So mix it 50 50 with self leveling thinner. I just I keep decanting these little bottles, it makes it easier, but pre thinned. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to do the top side, and then we're going to. Well, I've got all of my fingers. Um, we're going to do the top side. And then we're going to come back once it's dry and we'll do the other side, just because it's such a big jet, um, we'll do it in kind of stages. So it looks like this is kind of leaked a little bit, so it's all over my fingers, so I'm just going to wipe it off a little bit. Okay. Okay, hit the fan, the extractor. Okay, so, got that on, um, I forgot one thing, I forgot to mask up the intake at the front, which is pretty important, so luckily we did the top side, so when we flip it over to the other side, I make sure I put some foam in and, and mask that up inside the intake. I um, also had a little bit of paint left over, so I started spraying the tail a little bit. Um, but yep, that's pretty much it. Um, we're going to get that dry, flip it over to the other side, and then we'll come back in the white and do the shadow coat. So, um, yep, let's let, let this one dry, and we'll come back. Okay, so it's the following morning, as you can see, the top half is all dry, and now we're going to work on the bottom half. I did bunk, mask and bung up the intake right there, um, totally forgot, it could have been a bit of a disaster, <laughs> so luckily we did the top side first. So now we're just going to go ahead and just the same thing, just going to spray the whole bottom black, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, there we go, we've primed, so let this dry for a good couple of hours and we'll come back with the shadow coat. Right, so the black's all dry, now we'll come on with a shadow coat. So I'm going to use, as always, Dead White Game Air, which is acrylic paint. Um, no problem, as I mentioned all the time, putting mixing acrylics and lacquer, as long as the coat below it is dry and you don't flood this thing on it, you have no problems, I have no problems at all um, using acrylic. So shake and this is ready to go straight out the bottle um, I like this because it does cover the black pretty good I've tried lacquer paint and other whites and they just don't seem to do such a great job so you don't need a ton of white here I'm just gonna really just gonna break this up and create that like I say that kind of pre-shading shadow coat so I'm good I've got my gloves on I'm gonna throw the um, extractor on
All right, done. So, hopefully you kind of saw that. Um, no method to the madness, just I start light and then come back in when this is dried off a little bit, come back and hit some more, you know, more brighter kind of white. Um, it's a little tricky to hold now, so let me kind of put it back on here. So, yeah, just kind of random all over, as you can see, no method to the madness, just re break up that black and create um, a nice kind of, kind of shadow coat. Um, the top half is going to be dark gray, so this is somewhat redundant because the dark gray is just going to cover it. But light gray is going to show up, um, so it will look pretty good. So that's my prep for the paint. Um, let this dry off. As you can see, also the wheel, the landing gear, we have to obviously put in first. Um, we can't do it in last, so I, to, I went and painted that white um, as well as the bays and stuff. So um, you can kind of see, looking good with the black underneath, gives it a nice kind of heavy kind of look to the white. Um, that would need to be masked off where we have the gray, obviously, um, which again, it's not ideal, but the way this builds, you have to do that kind of first. So yeah, looking really good. Um, that's my kind of prep work. So we'll let this guy dry for a good few hours and then we'll start with the gray color scheme.